Our topic for this class, the fifth class, is the Church of God, Orthodox Worship 1 and Orthodox Worship 2. St. Paul said, Christ loved the Church and He gave Himself up for it. Christ loved the Church, died on the cross for the Church shed his precious blood for us. And the church is indeed his body. St. John of Cronstadt, 1829 to 1908, said the church is one and the same with the Lord, his body of his flesh and his bones. The church is the living vine, nourished by him and growing in him. Never think of the church apart from the Lord Jesus Christ and from the Father and Holy Spirit. When we speak of the Christian church today, we can speak of orthodoxy and Protestantism and Roman Catholicism as uh, the three great expressions of Christendom. There is a difference between Orthodox Christianity and Protestantism and Roman Catholicism. But until recently in the United States military, only two groups were recognized, Protestant and Catholic. And if you were a Greek Orthodox boy and you entered into the service um, years ago and you stated your faith, you were checked off as a Protestant. That's how the military viewed the Orthodox. But there are differences between Orthodoxy and Protestantism as there are differences between Orthodoxy and Roman Catholicism. What we share in common, all of these three traditions, is a belief in God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, and a belief in Jesus Christ, fully God and fully man, who came to earth for our salvation. We all believe this. This is what unites us. But let's take a look at how we are different. We believe it, the church is conciliar, that the councils of the bishops are the expression of the Trinitarian nature of the Church, cooperating and acting as one. Bishops, laity, and consuls. The bishop's role is ruling. When the bishop enters the Church, he takes his seat at a throne, representing the throne of Christ. For the bishop is Christ's true representative upon the earth. And so the first role of the bishop is ruling. The second role, as Christ was king and ruler, he was also a teacher. And so the bishops are the true teachers of the faith. And they are also the priests. Christ was priest and prophet and king, ruler and teacher and king. And so the sacraments when they are celebrated, they are always presided over by the bishop. When he is present, he presides at the service. And in his absence, the priest stands in the place of the bishop under the authority of the bishop. The priests and the deacons serve then the bishop in what we call the ordained priesthood. The bishops ordain. It takes three bishops to ordain one bishop and then one bishop to ordain a priest or a deacon. And yet the laity are also priests. By virtue of baptism, the laity, the whole people of God, are known as the royal priesthood of all believers. And that priesthood is best expressed in the role of God-parent spiritually, as a godparent sponsors a child, they are that child's priest, teacher, 
spiritually throughout their life. And it is also expressed in marriage as husband and wife raise their children in the church. They are priests leading their family in prayer, male and female. We believe in the presence of Christ in the Eucharist. We commune infants immediately after their confirmation. We prepare for receiving communion by a strict fast of eating absolutely nothing from midnight until the time we receive, and for those who are able, not to drink anything as well. An absolute fast from midnight until the next morning when we receive. And that moves us to unction, or anointing. Anointing takes place in the church out of obedience to St. James, who said, If anyone among you is sick, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has sins, he will be forgiven. Now that's a very interesting passage because although it starts 100 years upon this earth and never gets sick, what's going to happen? We're all going to the same place. We're all going to die in the flesh and go to the judgment seat of Christ. That's what the Bible teaches. And so physical health, although it's great and wonderful, and I pray that all of you live to be a hundred and that you all have perfect health. But more important, you know, we hear all the time, health, that's the most important thing. It is an important thing, but it's not the most important thing. Because even good health is not going to save your soul. It's not going to save you from dying. The most important thing is a healthy soul as well as a healthy body. The body and soul together. So that when our soul leaves our body and we go to the judgment seat of Christ, we go to Him cleansed, healed, forgiven, and He welcomes us into His kingdom. May this be so through His precious blood and His gift upon the cross of pouring out Himself for us and for our salvation. God bless you all. Next week, my beloved, the final class, Orthodox Worship 3. We will talk about feast fasts and private prayer. And I hope that uh, you will join me uh, next week for our final class in the introduction to Orthodox Christianity.